Welcome nope. to Snack Time. Uh, this is a preview card episode. I'm Vorthos Mike. You may know me from art-related magic things. And with me, as always, co-host, uh, Ant. Hello. Hello. Uh, Ant, wha- what's your connection to magic still? Still? Um, so this set is the last set that, that I uh, ever wrote names and flavor text for. Okay, that's it. So this is kind of like my uh, retirement set. Your cap, you capstone, if you will. Yes. Okay. And, uh, you know, we have a free preview, free preview given by Wizards of the Coast today. Um, we got a whole, got a message to say, hey, would you get a hold of an artist? Talk about a preview card about someone you've talked to already. And I said, okay, go on. And they're like, would you talk to Seth McKinnon? And we're like, we'll talk to Sebastian. Sure. That seems fine. Yeah. If we have to. If we, I mean. if we must. <laughs> If we must. So uh, people can probably see our card our card already, um, and it's called String of Disappearances. It's a uh, uh, one one drop instant. It's it's unsummon, except unsummon, but what, Ant? What is it? Chain Lightning. It's Chain Lightning for blue. How cool is that? Um, great idea. Just hadn't been done. I love that. Um, I As for the card itself, it has all the fun things with infinite combos, like uh, you bounce a dude, and you can bounce a great whale, or a peregrine drake, or a palancron to get infinite mana. Could be neat. Um, there could just be simply value from, like, Commander, bounce a Deep Glow Skate and something else, replay the Deep Glow Skate, um, or, like, Draining Whelk, um, even a Mold Drifter. So there's all the way, like, three mana, you can replay dudes, bum, 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 have sorts of shenanigans, because it's instant, so end step, get two dudes back, value town. Or, like, Treasure Mage, Trinket Mage. Fantastic usages there. Um, yeah, or but, just put it on the Scepter, right? Or just put it on, <laughs> oh my god, Isocrine Scepter, yeah, that seems good. That seems <laughs> filthy and cube. Um, filthy, but we you, know, you can hear about those from other people. We're the flavor. So, uh, Ant, you named this yeah. card, did you not? I I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, all all I know is one of two things happened. Mm. Either I opened the file and saw this art and immediately thought of this name, or I opened the file, saw someone suggested this name, and immediately said that it was perfect. One of those two <laughs> things happened. <laughs> Nice. I don't remember which. It was so long ago. <laughs> okay. But I can remember like distinctly like so anytime I'm ever working on a set, I immediately can tell like when it's Seb's art because it's got such a distinct style. Right? right. And I saw it and I was like, oh, I gotta name this one. Biscuits. And I don't I honest to God I cannot remember and I tried logging in to like see my notes and I couldn't get in anymore to the file because obviously it's printed now. Nice. But it, one of those two things. So either I did or someone else did. And if you're out there and you did, excellent work. I was your cheerleader Love in the file. I don't know if you remember I, that or not. <laughs> well, 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 we have Seb here. Um, Seb, can you talk about the art for us? Um, say hello to everybody and uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, talk about the art. Well, yeah, yeah it's kind of hard. To talk about. Um, what about like questions? Okay, you I want some questions here? Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so obviously, you're showing are these people. Who are these people? <laughs> who are they? Why don't they, Why don't they have faces? Why is it orange? It's are they made out of moss? Talk about the start. Um, <laughs> I think. Well, one thing I could say is I think uh, Cynthia uh, Shepard was the art director on this one. Yeah. Um, and it was supposed to be, oh, I, I think now they, they give me, um, a lot of like, uh, abstract ish pieces, sure. especially, and this one was a kind of an abstract, needed an abstract, um, yeah, like solution to it. Um, so I know Cynthia and she was really, you know, um, uh, great. Like, and she just, uh, let me go with this concept. Um, I don't really know why I thought about this concept. I know we had to go with three, there had to be three characters in it, um, and disappearing, uh, somehow. And they had to be linked. So it was, you know, that's what I did. That's kind of what you did. <laughs> well, okay. Can you talk to us about color here? So, you know, I mm-hmm. see the semblance of, this is a blue card. Okay, and uh, if you look at the actual card frame, the only blue that is in this are, are the little, you know, ma- magical essences that bounce, 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 right? Um, how did you right. go about choosing that, knowing it's a blue card, but yet you chose orange and green, colors that fight, <laughs> um, to almost like a, a, 
flesh covered ground they're standing on like how did you approach that um well i think the first thing i want to do is um here's the thing like uh, when you talk about approach like i kind of just i don't really really think about it uh in the moment <laughs> let's say but what, what, i know what i was trying to uh i mean at least the feeling you know i could talk about the feeling of it and <laughs> One feeling is I wanted to do something, um, well, play around with a palette that I'm not really used to playing with um, and kind of go try to do something kind of psychedelic, you know, because I think a lot of times my artwork, uh, people call it dark and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just felt like, in a way, could I somehow bring almost like a sci-fi kind of feel to this, like Ooh, old school okay. sci-fi. You know? Okay, okay, uh, yeah. And I don't know, I, I just started from there, and then the more I started um, rendering it out, if, if it's possible, I, I could ask Cynthia and ask her if, I, if it's okay to share the sketches, because you'll see that the sketches I sent in were very, uh, much more muted uh, color palettes, and um, like more brownish, and more like a bit like, um, dusk um on in, in on a like in a desert planet. um but i when i started working on it i just you know i just cranked up the saturation much more and i was liking that a lot and i just i know it just lended itself well to the surrealist scene going on so i just kind of kept it Do you know what i love about that so i mean seb's arguably like on top of his game right now right like everyone loves what he's doing they love his pieces right it would have been so easy for him to recognize that and be like you know what i'm just gonna do what's been working why not but instead he got this and was like what's something i've never done before (laughs) (laughs) it's true let's let's use orange (laughs) like what it it feels very much of that pink dirt like, all right. It feels of that era of that, like, na- late 1970s pulp sci-fi novels. I think it's the orange. I, I think it's that Dune yeah. sort of color feel where it would be, like, a beige outside of it. Obviously, when you add the blue of the card, it has a totally different feel. And it's like, oh, yeah, it looks like magic. And it looks like Seb. Yay. Um, but that... Well, you know- yeah. I mean, when, when you talk about blue card, I mean, the orange, orange and blue are complementary colors, right? So it's right. really going to look nice on the card itself, you right. know, like with the blue frame and everything. So Totally right. Totally right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's fun to see. Well, I, I, I think it's cool. I think, I think it looks neat, large, no doubt about it. Um, but Ant, that's not the main reason we wanted to talk to Seb, though, is it? No. No, of course no, not. no. So we interviewed Seb uh, a couple years ago, um, back when he was, you know, finding himself, finding his place. We talked about mood. Uh, the man loves the mood, loves loves the emotion, and says, as he said here, ah, I was just working on colors, and then I, I just figured it out. And uh, yeah, that worked. And we're like, okay, that made no sense like two years ago. <laughs> and now you're like, oh, right. Yeah, That's what the, the last time we talked to you, Seb, I think one of your uh, anecdotes was you were talking about how uh, the card "Blind Obedience" was yeah. was a turning point for you, and uh, that was one that um, I think Jeremy Jarvis was your art director at the time, and mm-hmm. and he emailed you and let you let you know that that it was an excellent piece and that it was something that yeah you know you should be really proud of, and I'm just wondering like. Uh, I, I remember you called that one out specifically. So since then, have you had another piece that for you has kind of usurped that card as being one that you would call out as as a new turning point to where you are yeah. now? Um, I think Ride of the Serpent was mm, uh, yeah. a major one. Um I think also Jeremy was also the art director on that one. And um, I just remember really wanting to do something. Um, I think, like, you know, again, people say uh, I have, like, a really, like, 2D style now. Uh, well, for a lot of cards, like like Deliver Unto Evil recently, um, it's kind of a 2D card. But it, I think the first time I kind of really tried that, uh, was with Riding the Serpent. So when, you know, and and, and I said I, I put that on. I posted um, the sketches on Twitter 
um, you can go check them out. And if you look at the sketches, they're you know they're different. There's one that's like kind of a low angle, looking up at the altar, and the other one's kind of more you know uh, a classic, you know like a normal. Um, but then I, I really went with like uh, the last proposition. The third one was the really two D aspect, and I was really, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised that um, that one was chosen. You know, and I just really went all out on the two on that kind of style. Um, obviously, like really inspired by Klimt, um, and I think even today, like moving forward, like I remember even um, seeing I saw Klimt an exhibition uh, right when I was starting. You know, to to work on magic stuff, and I just it, I it still marks me today, like seeing those paintings live. And uh, yeah, so I just kind of I, that's where that was probably the next big turning point for me to to see how that was even accepted. You know, like I I, I did it, and I, I there wasn't any kind of revision needed or nothing like that, and they went with it. And um, yeah, and and I think for me, what I was trying to do as well is, um, I don't know. I I, I well, we, we spoke about this before, but about like uh, you know when magic first started coming out, like the way I feel, um, I felt as a kid playing the game. That I think in that. Piece especially, I was really drawing from those feelings, <laughs> like sure, that right. time the kid, like with the the you know with the older cards or something. Like I, I was trying, I was just kind of riding that that wave of, of feeling, and then I I kind of tried to stay there, um, moving forward. You know, I think if yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. <laughs> I, I, get, I get I get that entirely. Um, so obviously that that's been leveling up leveling up uh received a planeswalker that you know you you handled top to bottom phenomenally um which you know there, there's another cast that i've mentioned discussed um i i want to touch on on where you are professionally and most notably um you you've had success at spectrum the, the spectrum art annual yeah um which is the uh, submission-based process of book, and Seb won the best institutional, which would be like commissioned by a company, car uh, artwork of a year um, in, with the car Stasis, which is a shout-out to my boy AJ, who's probably listening. Um, and it, it was a gold award, which Magic has only won one other time. <laughs> so, huge deal. And I'm wondering what that meant to your career, Seb, when that happened. Um. Uh, well, probably a, a great deal. Well, to my career, yes, for sure. I think <laughs> after, after that, um, I started getting more emails, definitely from you know, um, people looking for commissions and different companies. Um, I also, um, yeah, I think I just uh, all around it was. It's been really great for my career but it, it, melt, it meant more to me I think on a personal Ooh, uh, level because um, whether or not um, I won that award you know, I'd still be trying to I've been doing what I'm doing now you know like I, I uh, but it, it's really you know to because I remember as a um, like as a student you know uh, studying illustration design uh, one of my teachers the teacher who um uh, taught me Photoshop. You know, I, I was a huge skeptic at first with digital painting. I was like, no way, I'm never going to touch that. Um, I was doing purely watercolors um, when I was a student, mostly. And uh, this teacher, his name is Minard Hansen, um, and great teacher. And he taught me, he just like opened the whole my whole world to Photoshop, but he would bring in the Spectrum books to class. It was his personal collection. Oh. And I okay. remember looking at the spectrum books, like, and he'd like, pr like, go on about them and say, like, if you get in here, it's like a huge deal, and na na na, and it was just, it was really quite something. So to now to see my name there, or I and get it published in the spectrum book like that, and on top of that, like with the award and everything, like, just that was just incredible. So that it felt like a real, like a personal mi milestone, um, definitely. And yes, but yes, it has helped uh, career-wise a lot. That's good to hear. Um, it, people have lost their minds about that and said, hey, when do we get our Kickstarter? When do we really get the playmats on that? Um, which has been fun. Did, did you, like two years ago, 
uh, thinking back, it's, you know, I'm getting into magic, I'm making a couple cards, and you have a first Kickstarter, goes out, almost 3,500 people are like, yeah, we like your jam, we like your thing. Like, you don't have 3,500 brothers, like, you have a lot of them, but not 3,500. Um, and then this past year, you had over 7,000 people raise their hand and be like, man, we love your jam, we do. Like, how do you stay grounded during that to say... I, I'm a bo- I'm a boy playing a game, and my brothers get to open packs with my art in it, and that's kind of neat to like Reddit like fawning over you, and then having to ban people who post your playmats too often when they arrived at their house. Did you know that like they had to ban people? Oh, yeah, it became a rule on Reddit that you couldn't <laughs> post a Seb McKinnon playmat. <laughs> because so many people did it. Yeah, it yeah. literally... It, was, sp- it became spam. It's You spammed oh. Reddit. You, you literally... You magic Reddit. You, you've, you made people lose their minds so much they had to make a rule to be like, yeah, 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 we like them too, but like, relax, post other stuff. Like, how do you... <laughs> how do you go to work in the morning and you're still like, yeah, man, I'm still, still worried about a 19-year-old taking my job. Like, how do you stay motivated during that? Ah. Uh. I don't know. I I mean, it's incredible. Well, it, it's really incredible. I think I'm still a bit in shock, to be honest. And for me, it's more like, like again, like see, the, 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 there's a reason um, for those campaigns, and it's you know it was to raise money for a film. So I think my mind is just always on the goal ahead, which is to make the film. Um, so I don't really, I don't, I try not to linger too much and. Um, you know, like, because it is amazing, and, and it it is it kind of hits you at, at some point too. You're like, wow, like all these people, and then uh, there's also this kind of feeling, like, oh, I can't mess up now. You know, like I I hope my, my the next cards that will come out that they're gonna like, and there's more pressure now. It feels like you know to deliver, um, but um, yeah, I just honestly I think I just keep my head down, and I'm just I I I know what I want to do, and I'm just gonna do that, and 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 in the meantime. I continue doing art for magic and it's no different. Like, even though there's all that it, and it's wonderful, like all that response, I think for me, like I do my best work if it's just something I almost do for myself, you know? Yeah. Um, and if I like the card myself, if I'm drawing it, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I like this. I'm I, you know, I'm feeling this. And sometimes it's, it's a challenge too, because maybe you don't connect with the art description right away. Um, and you think, oh, phew, I don't know if I'm going to have fun doing this. But then, just you know, you know, there's always something to to find and to discover. So I just kind of, yeah, I try, I try just to keep it simple, you know, like <laughs> as much as possible <laughs> if I can. What about the uh, what about the mechanics though? Because because like you also play Magic, right? And you're very familiar with how the game works. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when you get a card, if if it's a card in particular that like really excites you mechanically, does that help um, get you excited to do the art? And, and like in the inverse of no. that, like if you get a card, no, you don't really care. <laughs> like I, I really, mechanics don't matter mechanics? as much. Oh no! Well, again, see for me, I never played competitively. I like I, I, I don't play as much anymore. Like for the maybe the past two years or so, like. Um, because I, I would only play with my brothers, and my brothers are all kind of, they're they're you know we're not living together anymore, and we're all you know, everyone's kind of a, a part uh, kind of thing, and they're all they, you know they're growing up and their own professionals, and um, but uh, it would it was a summer thing that we do and get together, and it, sure like I still have my old cards. I just saw them the other day. Like uh, but when I when I would make a deck, I think I may have mentioned this last time too. I I didn't care what the cards did at all. I only cared about what the art looked like on them, um, so I didn't win many games. But yeah. uh, at least I, I just I had fun looking at the cards when I was playing, you know. So right. mechanically, I, I doesn't really I, I don't I, I don't mind at all. It's just it's too bad if you do something really cool. Like um, I have a few pieces coming out in Modern Horizons that I'm really I really love a lot, um, and. I hope they're going to be on good cards because then that's just, ex- it's like a little thing extra, you know, on the top. But uh, when I'm doing the artwork itself, I don't really mind um, 
if the card is going to, well, what the mechanics do, I've got to say. I just try to, to focus on uh, creating a, a nice, something nice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Does that answer your question? I don't know if I answered the question. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's very interesting because I always wonder because like when I would write flavor text, like names mm-hmm. and flavor text, um, I would find that sometimes that would that would happen where if there was a card that I that was really exciting um, mechanically, and and by exciting I don't necessarily mean you know busted or really good, but mm-hmm. if it was doing if the card was doing something different or something novel then mm-hmm. that was always exciting to me because it was an opportunity to maybe inject uh, some new flavor into the game that didn't exist prior because this mechanic is new and didn't exist prior, mm-hmm. right? So right. Yeah. something like String of Disappearances where you know we have this chain lightning version of Boomerang, you know, like that's different. Unsummon. And, unsummon. And, or, yeah, unsummon. Unsummon. Me. Sorry. Yeah. Unsummon. Um, that's, you know, unique and cool and, uh, you know, getting to basically create the visual that represents that is, is exciting, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, I, I want to talk more about that motivating piece here. Um, so for, for folks that may, may not pay, t- pay attention all the time, what is this film? <laughs> right? Like we're aware of what it is, but for people to say, Hey man, you've had two really successful Kickstarters. Man, I bet you're eating all the fancy cheese. And I know you're in that French part of Canada, so you know you got fancy cheese. And, <laughs> and instead, you're like, no, no, let's go and turn the film. And people are like, what What does that mean? Oh, yeah. Well, it's it's uh, it's a big deal. <laughs> it is, it's yeah. A, it's a, it, well, it's, um, I think all artists have their passion project, you know, um, that they have, that they work on on the side whenever they have free time. Um, and mine has been this film project, um, which started the, fir- I think the first one came out in 2013. Um, it started as a short film trilogy. Uh, it's called Kin Fables. Um, and it started, I, it was, uh, yeah, it's, a, I felt, I don't know. I, I, it was at a time when I was feeling like I, I, you know, I love painting and I love drawing and I felt like uh, if only there was a way I could somehow make my paintings move and I'm like, well, of course, movies. So then um, I just started, you know, getting into it. But what fast forward from 2013 to now, you know, I've done these, uh, sh- these short films that take place in this kind of cinematic universe I'm creative, uh, which is called Kin Fables. And um, it's, it's a feature film. It's, um, you know, I, I've always loved movies. I've always had a dream of becoming, um, like, a director, you know, and, and, and creating my own um, films. And it's been a project, yeah, like, what, it's, that started in 2013, so where are we now, 2019? Six years later. Uh, over, yeah, over six years um, in the making. And it's been really challenging because um, the short films were created in the earlier years, and then... I think starting from 2015, I was trying, I knew I wanted to make a feature that was based on the shorts. And I felt like, you know, like like we had something going on, we put them online, there was a little fan base starting, you know, so people now are discovering, even today, discovering the project for the first time, and and they send me messages, and they send me emails, and say, this is really beautiful, and what is this, you know, so... um, it's been a, a really challenging uh, for the past years because I have this script and I've been rewriting and rewriting it and I had a, a, a pitch package and I've been trying to get the funding for it, which is so um, hard. It's really challenging and, and no one takes you seriously if you're a first time filmmaker. You know, sure. um, you I, I've been to pitch meetings. I've been beauty now of magic. It's it's being made. So that is so i can't even put into words how um thankful i am you know even just to think about it is just crazy where i it's it's really transformed everything um about the film is thanks to these two campaigns where i'm at a point now where i can seriously start um you know pre-production and this is opening the doors to um uh, more investors more investors now because it's it's a very different conversation when you have you know, when you're the first one taking the first step, you're saying, look, I believe in this. 
I believe in my in my film, I'm going to put this, you know, check out these Kickstarters, you know, like I'm putting that much money into the film. Uh, then all of a sudden you have other people jumping in, you know, and saying, okay, cool, me too. And so now it, it, it's, 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 you know, I'm still just a, a bit shy from, from um, reaching the full budget. Um, because it, it is a it is a fantasy film. I guess. Wow, well, I'm talking way too much. I'm not talking about the film. Itself. No, 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 no. <laughs> this um, is the best it's part. A fantasy film. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, but it, it's yeah, it, it's a fantasy film, and you know, to to do something uh, not cheesy and not corny and not look look back. It's a very tough genre, you know, to um, to, to do right. And, and uh, especially if you don't have the right, uh, enough money to do it. Um, so it's just, it's really thanks to, yeah, the community now and everything. And so at the point where I'm, I'm juggling everything, and, and honestly, it's a really, it's, a, it's uh, my plate's never been more full uh, right now, um, trying to juggle everything. Because um, I, I want to keep paying for magic, and I want to work on my film, and uh, you know, even even now, like the Kickstarter campaign is is going in the background. You know, people are still placing their orders and um, you know, just managing you know failed payments and following up with people and all the a day from just all the backers. Just they have questions and you have to answer it. And I'm more than happy to to do that. But it's just it's like I'm feeling very like spread thin. Let's say you know. So, um, but I welcome it and it's it's really great. And um, yeah, oh, so I did. Do you have any more questions about the film? I feel like it didn't say much, but it's a fantasy film. It's a fantasy film, and if you want a, a good idea about it, um, you can go watch the shorts, and it, they're they're kind of um, oh, I don't know how to describe them, but they're, they're there's no dialogue in them. It's they're I guess you could say them the shorts are more like mood um, mood short films um, that kind of lay the groundwork of the mood that the film is going to have. But the film has dialogue and everything. And um, in, in, in 2017, I released a, um, uh, well, I got a grant from a uh, um, uh, government institution in Canada, Factor. And thanks to the grant, I was able to produce an album um, because I do all the music as well for the film. I don't know if that I mentioned. Of course that. you do. Of course you uh, do. Why, <laughs> why wouldn't you have that talent and skill level too? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, it, was, it was it was cool because I you know I got the grant to make a, an album, and I do all the music under under the name Clan, and I work with a, a singer, a really amazing singer from Montreal who does lends the voice of, to the project, and um, a violinist from France, um, and it's kind of three of us doing this, this music together, but, um, yeah, to, uh, in 2017, I did a, the, my last thing I directed was a, a short called, um, the stolen child. And it's, it's actually the, uh, the title of the feature at the moment based off the poem, um, by, uh, Yeats. And, um, yeah, it takes place in, in, in a fairy world. And, um, it's. I don't want to say too much about it, but uh, it's. I think it's really gonna. I'm trying to do something again, like probably. I'm trying to, to do something that people maybe haven't seen, um, and I I'm really excited about it, and it's gonna have everything um, that I'm into in in the film, you know. And uh, I the plan right now is to, uh, you know, simply again, like I. I I think when when all this stuff happens and like uh, Mike, you were saying, how do you stay grounded? I think it's just you take it one step at a time and you keep you try to keep things simple in your mind. And for me, the simple thing is I just want to make a good film, and that's it. You know, I've I've you know spoken to a lot of people in the in the industry and how there are so many different ways avenues to make your film. And, um, you know, they're talking about distributors and, you know, locking in deals here, left and right, you know, all there. But now I, I, I'm really fortunate, thanks to the Magic uh, community and thanks, you know, to everyone. It, I know, owe so much to Magic because I'm, I'm able to bypass all of that now, you know, and I can actually just make a film on my own terms without any kind of comp compromise and uh, keep it simple and keep my head down and just do something that I personally would like to see, you know, um, 
so yeah wow i felt like i was talking a long time no that's fantastic <laughs> though it's it's we get to hear about it but it's different when you talk about it right and Ant and I, I've been sending Ant messages back and forth to each other here, and um, we know a lot about this project, Seb. Mm. And um, I, I'm asking, can can we ask the question about your brother's role in it, knowing that we are pre-recorded and we can edit? My brother's role? Well, your brother, he had a role, and the genesis of this project has some mm. interactions from your brother, Right. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I started it with my brother Ben. Um, right. Yeah, and uh, well, who is the? Well, b- before I start, yeah. do you want that to be on the 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 cast or not? That is up to you. We didn't ask you though. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I still. I mean, I don't really like talking about it. Um, okay. Still, you know, but uh, yeah, um, I'm. I don't know. It's it's up to you guys. I mean, I I don't mind if you. Uh... Well, how about this? How about this? Seth? Mm-hmm. You worked on this project with your late brother. That's fairly well known. You can look this up online and find that out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. Does that factor of almost continuing this vision that you two had together continue to drive you? Well, of course. <laughs> You know, it's a uh, it's a huge, huge factor. Um, in many ways, it feels just um, yeah, like some like uh, unfinished, something unfinished. Um, and I can't see myself doing anything else um, until uh, this film gets made. Pretty much, you know. So I don't. I. I I don't. I, I really don't see how I can even start another kind of project until, or you know, I, I can't move on from it until, um, until like it gets done. And so, yeah, definitely, it feels like, you know, and it's even, it's been really, you know, difficult um, going forward uh, with it too. But when you work on it when I'm when I work on it and I'm really alone with the project and I'm really you know uh yeah I I I guess I he's still present you know in it um so it's it's something that's very powerful yeah special so I I have to I I have to keep going with it so that's beautiful that that honestly is that there, there's a legacy there of, of the McKinnon brothers to finish this film, this vision that wasn't a random, oh, we're going to work on one thing and we're going to be done with it. This was like, this is what we're going to do until it's done. And now mm-hmm. you're going to finish it. And that's mm-hmm. that's incredible, man, that you're, that through magic, honest to God, through magic's Kickstarters, through magic's community of, believing in you and be like hey man we really like what you do and this personal project that you're working on is able to yeah. flourish because of that that's that's incredible that's that's mm-hmm. that's everyone's everyone's dream is to have that and and for you you have additional god it's you probably have yeah. more pressure in the movie than you do in magic you know Seb, how did you how did you find out about magic um i well, like when when I was a kid, yeah. Well, I like um, was it from your brothers or? It was. Oh God, how did I find out? I think it was a gift. My parents just got me, got us a gift. I think they a deck, like they got us a, a pack, and we didn't even know how to play because we. It it seemed like too complicated, um, so we just. Because we, we were into, like, Pokemon and Digimon, you know? Right. And this seemed just like my parents... I think it was my parents. My parents, for a gift, got us each a, a pack. And we were hooked right away, you know, because of the artwork. And we didn't know how to play, but we had our own binders with different colors. And we just... all We, we had our collection, and we would trade cards without knowing what they did or anything. It was just based off the artwork, you know? So... That's, I mean, to me, what what's amazing about that is that this game that 
brought you and your brothers closer together through the art, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, because you did art for that game, you're able to finish your movie, right, Mm -hmm. that you were doing with your brothers. Like, that whole thing came full circle from just, like, a deck of cards that your parents got you guys, probably on a whip, right? Yeah. (laughs) yeah they're probably like oh this looks kind of cool yeah and yeah. and Crazy. it's all because of that like you're able to to yeah. to do this which and realize you know ultimately what was your dream and your brother's dream like that's that's amazing and mm-hmm. speaks volumes to you know like the magic community like that's incredible yeah i i don't think people maybe the community doesn't realize how important like how crucial their role is in this <laughs> maybe you know they don't like, know no i would say they don't know don't they're like they we like your art and their art's cool and you're like yeah and other things and they're like wait there there's another reason and you're like yeah man and i don't i don't i didn't always see some of those things mainly because you didn't need it right you didn't need to pull that people through this is my personal project this is a family project this is a deep within me need to finish this you could just say, this is my art, oh, I've got to work back on my film, and it still went well. And it's almost like you can go to that well eventually, right? Like Kickstarter 3.0 or whatever, whatever, public phase of the film. Whenever you do a Kickstarter of the film, that's like a big boom, boom film, you know? Um, mm. th- there's people that are weighty and that not only love your art, sure, yes, we do, but want to support you as a person, like beyond that's this is like everything patreon like promises they're like no they'll support you and they like you and you're like yeah yeah it's about the art though but in your case it's moving toward that for it's just not everybody knows yet which i i think is a, is a really fun opportunity that people want to get closer into you they want to hear more about the film they want to get scripts and go to have a blt on site or i don't know if you guys have bacon up in that far north in canada i mean maybe it's mutton i'm not sure uh, could be mo- could be moose bacon, could be. Um, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it, I, I think that's fantastic. Um, and we you know here we started just talking about a random preview card. Uh, how fun is that? Um, mm-hmm. a- a- and uh, you got other, some other questions I know that you might have had in your back pocket. My only other comment is I just wanted on the record, Seb, that I was your first fan. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that's, that's it. I have. I have still to this day on my wall. I'm looking at it right now. I have a canvas print of Lightning Strike because oh, yeah. it was it was the first card that I ever named. It was the first card that I ever saw in real life that like I contributed to the game when I was a kid. I played nothing but Burn, mm-hmm. um, and so like just the idea of because I can remember like sitting in my room three in the morning like sifting through red cards. And like just the idea that one of those red burn cards like was something that I contributed towards like was incredible. And then on top of that, like you were my favorite artist at the time, and I was like, I I gotta get a print of this thing. Like I, I have to. <laughs> um, and, that, and, that, and that's a unique. Uh, you have the only one, right? Like that's the. the I do. Yeah. yeah. Can you, can you talk about that, Seb? Because um, not everybody knows what a like a, a monotype. Is the you know mm-hmm. the art term for it. people don't know what that means? Can you can you explain what that thing is you do? Oh it, well, just because it's it's digital and you know um, physical copy doesn't exist most of the time. Although Mike, you're going to be proud of me because oh. I have I've been working on some uh, full on traditional. What? Re- re- what? Oh boy! Anyway, that's, that's fire. That's hot. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's hot. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, Talk about yeah, breaking the right, internet. Right. That would just destroy. Oh <laughs> I, man. I know you've been telling me you really have to start. You need I need some of your art for my art shows. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna try. <laughs> anyway, but oh, about the about the mono monotypes, um yeah, well I think and, and you were one of the first to, to ask about one and um yeah, it's just they're basically one of one canvas prints. Um like they'll never be printed on canvas like that ever again. A, a canvas is of any form, you know. Like, and it's it's uh, that's what you have, and it's 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 the only one that exists in the world, and that will ever exist in the world. And um, since then, there's there have been a few that have asked me about them. Um, I think I did one for of Topo Guys. I sold uh, 
recently, um, yeah, like uh, a whole bunch, uh, like they, Stasis and Assassin's Trophy uh, also were, so, uh, were made and sold. But I only make them really when I get interest um, about them. Or if I have a, like a, a, tr a traditional uh, piece, um, like either like a sketch uh, or um, you know like a color study, and I, I I bundle it together. I like bundling it together, you know. And I did that recently with, with um, uh, Bedevil that I held an auction for. Mm, and right, right. So right. that on the back, if ever we meet one day, Ant, and you want a, a like a quick sketch on the back of it to make it extra unique. Did I sketch on the back of it? I forget. You uh, you sent me an artist proof that has a sketch Which, of the okay. harpy on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, if ever I we meet and you should, I see your print person. I could do a little sketch on the back for you if you want, because that's that's something I do now. Like on the back of the canvas print to make it extra unique and special, I I uh, I do a painting on the back, like a paint sketch. Oh, okay. Uh, so well, wait. So kind of mine is the only one that doesn't have a sketch on the back. That makes it even more unique and special. <laughs> 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 you gotta visit him in non Montreal now, Auntie. You yeah, need, no, you, need to bring, that, honestly, you and your yeah, wife if, need to go and bring the art with and be like, if hey, we do that. You know, we'll, I'll tell you, I'll bring my, I'll bring my son, and we can, uh, we can hang out. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty sure. darn fun. Well, <laughs> on that note, um, we'll be seeing more of Seb soon. Wonderful. Thank you for the time today. We really do appreciate it. Um, Seb, yeah, Seb people... it's always a pleasure. It man. is. It, it has been fun. Oh. We need to. We need to. We need to chat more often. We need to hear from you more often. I'm going to yell at other people to give you a call, so you have to yell at people to stop doing interview requests. Um, it's dangerous. <laughs> Fame is a dangerous thing. Um, but where where can people find you, Seb? Where's the best place to get a hold of you? Um. Well. Oh, like uh, I mean, on social media, is, I'm I'm there, but if it, I really prefer uh, simple emails through my website, Seb at uh, sebmckinnon dot com. Um, it's really hard to keep track sometimes, you know. It's like Twitter messages and uh, Instagram messages and Facebook messages, so uh, email is the best way. But yeah, you, I'm, I'm, I'm every, I'm, my website is great. Website and then on my website you have links to all the t the social media platforms. So that's the best way. And then to find more about um, Kin Fables, the the film, it's Kin Fables. And um, yeah, again, Instagram, Facebook, all those things. All the things. We'll we'll post some things all about Kin Fables as well. So people should check check it out. We'll be talking about it on social media. Um, Seb, thank you immensely again. Um, oh, thank, thank you guys. It's, it's I don't it, time went by so quickly. I, I still remember that first uh, snack time we did. <laughs> it has, it has. Like you probably have like a full beard now, which is nice. <laughs> I do. <actually. laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, Ant, where can people find you for any follow up? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ant Tessator. Okay, and I, I'm always at Vorthos Mike. Thanks again for uh, stopping by the game. We'll see you again soon.